And at this hour, 418 PM, the eye of the storm is now just a little more than 150 miles away from Fort Myers, Florida, right at 169 miles, and it seems to be following that blue arrow. That's pretty close to where we think the ultimate track of the center of circulation will be, and it matters on which side of that eye that a community is on based on how the impact is going to pan out. Uh, even in the Florida Keys, down the coast here, all the way to the tip of Florida, Port Charlotte, Fort Myers, Sanibel, all the way up to Tampa, there will be varied effects based on where this actually crosses the shore, and it could be a category four right up to the point that it moves inland over Florida's west coast by Wednesday afternoon and Wednesday evening. A slow mover too. Look at this. These are 12 hour increments. It goes from Wednesday at 1 p.m. being near the coast to Thursday at 1 p.m. being over Orlando. Now here's why I say it makes such a big difference because one has the wind coming off the ocean. One side does the other side. The wind is coming off the land. And if this is the case, if the eye ends up south of Tampa, it would be the best case scenario with a storm like this in the Tampa area because you've got a shore offshore wind. The wind coming off the land would push a lot of the water back out to sea. Some flooding is still possible because of the intense heavy rain, but it would not be the surge like we expect to happen down here farther to the south. In fact, here's the latest storm surge product from the National Hurricane Center. All that red corresponds to greater than nine feet of flood water from the ocean above sea level here. So it comes in into Port Charlotte. This could be an eerily similar situation to how Hurricane Charlie panned out back in 2004, all the way down here to Sanibel, Fort Myers, some areas within the Fort Myers area potentially getting uh, more than nine feet of storm surge. And because we get that offshore flow coming from Lakeland and Orlando out the bay here, that would really reduce the flooding in Tampa from the storm surge three feet or so expected there. That's a lot more manageable than what you would get with that stuff that's happening farther down to the south around here. What do the impacts look like? Well, in the short term, it is bone dry. All this purple over North Alabama, Central Alabama, Mississippi, Tennessee. That's extremely dry air. So through Friday morning, we are dry and not enough of this moisture comes in on Friday to really make me think we get any sort of significant rain through nine o'clock Saturday morning, though. The core of the storm is here over the eastern part of Georgia, South Carolina. We're starting to see the wet weather edge in, but it never really gets all that extreme around here. All the really, really thick humidity stays out to the west, so the dry air hangs around and weather like we have right now is actually helping us out by preventing that storm from moving north into it. Current temperatures are in the 70s. We expect to be close to this again tomorrow after having been in the upper 40s tomorrow morning, a sunny day tomorrow, sunny on Thursday, partly sunny on Friday. There may be a brief shower Friday afternoon. Then Saturday is the rainier day, mainly east of Birmingham. Showers will thin out on Sunday and we start getting warmer going into next week.